Uh, good evening. Um, welcome to the Monday, April 22nd regular meeting of the Glendale Transportation and Parking Commission. I'd like to start off this meeting uh, by making a motion um, that I, Commissioner Yakubian, stand in as um, Chairman Pro Tem for this meeting. Uh, Chairperson Kirk Jen uh, is uh, battling a, a bad case of laryngitis, and um, therefore I will be. Uh, stepping in his place for for tonight we're good okay thank you Well, welcome everyone again um, to the Monday, April 22nd meeting, regular meeting of the Glendale Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, may we please have the first item on the agenda? Item 1A is roll call. Commissioner Gonzalez? Here. Chair Pro Tem Yakubian? Yes. Commissioner Kirkjian? Here. Commissioner Sahakian? Commissioner Nazarian? Yes. Second item. Item 1B is flag salute by Chair Pro Tem Yakubian. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, the next item, please. Item two is posting of the agenda. The agenda for the Monday, April 22nd, 2019 regular meeting of the Glendale Transportation and Parking Commission was posted by Thursday, April 18th, 2019 before 5 p.m. on the bulletin board outside of City Hall. Thank you. Next item. Item three is an action item. It's a motion approving installation of two speed humps on Lamita Avenue between Glendale Avenue and Louise Street. This will be presented by Mr. Edward Heaty. Good evening, Chairwoman Yakovian and the commissioners. Um, before you, we have a request came from the uh, public and the school regarding a request for the installation of speed humps on the Lomita between the Glendale and Lewis Street. This is similar to what we had originally, and we may see more coming up on this uh, for the same type of request, especially around schools. Uh, we have the uh, uh, acting principal traffic engineer, Mr. Pastori, he'll be presenting a PowerPoint presentation, go over the requirements and uh, how that particular segment of the street did meet those requirements or not, and they're asking for your uh, uh, approval or support for that request from the public. And uh, go ahead, we'll pass the floor to Mr. Pastori. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening, Chairman Pro Tem Yokobian, Chairman Kirchian, and members of the Commission. My name is Pastor Casanova, and I'm Acting Principal Traffic Engineer for the City of Glendale. And today I'll be providing a presentation regarding the proposed traffic calming measures on Lomita Avenue between Glendale Avenue and Louise Street. once I get this to work. You get it? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, as mentioned, uh, we'll be discussing proposed traffic calming measures on Lomita Avenue between Glendale Avenue and Louise Street. Uh, Louise, uh, sorry, uh, Lomita Avenue is located just south of Colorado Street, about an eighth, and a mile, eighth of a mile south of Colorado Street. Can you click, click Lisa? as indicated and highlighted on the exhibit. <coughs> Next, please. So a, a bit of a background. Public Works staff received a request for traffic calming measures on Lomita um, Avenue to address concerns regarding vehicle speeding in the area, predominantly around the residential area and adjacent to Holy Family Grade School. Um, and of course the concern of elementary school children in the area. The presence of Holy Family Grade School is important to note because 
it is contiguous to Lomita Avenue, which makes Lomita, this segment of Lomita Avenue a school zone as it relates to the neighborhood traffic calming guidelines. Next, please. The preferred traffic calming measure that was identified by the community stakeholders, uh, including the uh, Holy Family Grade School in this case, uh, were speed humps. So as we move forward in the, in the study, we'll be evaluating the, loca the location uh, for application of speed humps. Next, please. The uh, exhibit on the, uh, on the screen shows a zoomed in uh, version of Lomita Avenue uh, showing and depicting the local land uses uh, contiguous to this segment of street. On the north side of the street we have Holy Family Grade School just on the north and in Westerly Quadrant <coughs> near Louise Street. Just east of Holy Family Grade School is a residential zone uh, combined uh, multifamily as well as single family dwellings. And on the south side of Lomita Avenue is Holy Family High School, as depicted on the screen. Next, please. This slide shows an aerial of the location to get a bird's eye view of the Holy Family um, Grade School, uh, just to the west near Louise, and on the east quadrant, uh, the uh, residential component, and on the south side of Louise Avenue, the uh, high school, Holy Family High School. Next, please. This exhibit shows us a street view of Lomita Avenue looking eastbound or easterly towards Glendale Avenue. Next. And this next slide shows us looking westbound on Lomita Avenue towards Louise Street. And just to the right side of the picture, you'll see that's a portion of the uh, Holy Family um, Grade School that we can see on the screen. Next, please. So in response to the concerns brought forth by the community, staff followed the procedures outlined in the city's adopted neighborhood traffic calming program, and we performed the following analysis. Next. The first step is we conducted a screening <coughs> evaluation. Uh, first step, uh, checking the, the street classification of Lomita Avenue. And as stipulated in the neighborhood traffic calming program, a street in order to qualify for the program uh, needs to be either a local street a neighborhood collector or community collector. In this case, next, um, Lomita Avenue is a local street and it does qualify for, uh, for the screen evaluation under the street classification. Next, please. Um, this segment of Lomita also is in a residential zone <coughs> and meets the uh, criteria in the neighborhood traffic calming guidelines. And I'll note again that because the Holy Family uh, great school is contiguous to Limita Avenue, then this area qualifies, or this segment of street qualifies as a school zone. So as we move forward in the evaluation, we're, we will take into account the, the updated traffic calming guidelines that, that were modified to incorporate school zones. The engineering study included an um, analysis of the 24-hour speed and volume traffic counts uh, staff conducted a field investigation to confirm the roadway character characteristics, including the street widths, uh, signs, striping, geometry, and profile of the roadway. From there, we applied the neighborhood traffic calming guidelines, and this is a recognizable matrix we have on the screen that outlines the traffic cal uh, calming guidelines uh, criteria, the guidelines that we use to evaluate the prevailing conditions out in the, on the field or in the street, and whether or not that criteria was satisfied. Um, firsthand, the street needs to be one lane in each direction, in which case Lomita Avenue in this segment is one lane in each direction. The street needs to be classified as a residential district, in which case this segment is. And the street classification needs to be local neighborhood or community collector. And as mentioned previously, the uh, classification of Lomita in this segment is a local street. Um, the, uh, the street needs to be either posted or a prima facie, facie speed limit of 25 miles per hour, in which case um, Lomita Avenue in this segment is 25 miles per hour, thus qualifying. And can you click on the next one, please? And because, uh, as mentioned previously, this segment of Lomita is 
within a designated school zone, then we're able to apply the 90th percentile speed as opposed to 85th percentile that we use for areas that are not in a school zone. The, uh, the findings were that the data came out at 30 miles per hour for this segment. The volumes also need to be within a range of 1,000 to 10,000 vehicles uh, average daily traffic, in which case we had 1,526 in this segment, thus qualifying. And the street cannot be on a truck transit or a, fire, uh, a primary fire response route, and neither of which it is, therefore that, qual that criteria is qualified. The street needs to be 40 feet, um, 40 feet maximum or less, and, uh, and Lomita Avenue is 36 feet wide, thus meeting the criteria. And lastly, uh, because again, this is within a school zone, it needs to have 67% support from the community as opposed to non-school zone streets of 75%. And in this case, our prevailing condition or what we found is we have 88% support from the community. Next, please. This slide, this slide provides a, a summary of um, our methodology as, as we move forward in the community engagement, community outreach. Uh, the Holy Family uh, grade school was involved in, in, uh, in, the, in the process. The, um, the main concerns from the community came via the, the Holy Family grade school and uh, which initiated the process. And uh, so staff prepared a petition package once it was found that all of the neighborhood traffic calming criteria were met. And that petition package was forwarded to the Holy Cross uh, family grade school representatives. The representatives then circulated the petition to the community and were able to obtain 30 out of the 30, support from 30 out of the 34 residential dwellings or occupants in the, uh, on that segment of street, thus representing 88% support for the installation of speed humps. Next, please. Summary of, uh, of staff findings and recommendations are that uh, Lomita Avenue does in fact meet the, all of the criteria stipulated in the neighborhood traffic calming program for installation of speed humps. But, uh, w uh, in, in engaging in the community, we found 88% support uh, from the community for the speed humps. And as such, the staff recommendation would be to install two speed humps on Lomita Avenue between Glendale Avenue and Louis Street. Next, please. The uh, map on the screen shows a, uh, an approximate uh, depiction of the locations of the speed humps. Um, if the text is too small to read, I'll, I'll read it out. Uh, the uh, speed hump closest to Glendale Avenue is approximately 238 feet, then another 238 foot separation to the next speed hump uh, that's closest to Louise, which places it at approximately 275 feet. Next, please. And uh, that concludes the presentations. If you have any questions, I, I would love to answer them. Uh, actually, I have a few. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, what is on the north side of Elk? On that, it's kind of cut off on the map. Can you go back? Oh, I have a map. I is it, is it residential? It. Um, north side of Elk, we'll have to look at the aerial. Let's so you have Holy Family yeah. Elementary on one side. Yes. And the reason why I'm asking this is, so I see that Lomita has gone through the checklist of it. But what concerns me, which always does when we're discussing humps, is the mm -hmm. domino the effect. Street. And so it, it's <clears throat> going to beg the question, if, if these get installed on Lomita, it seems to be the next so obvious place for down. people to speed would be on <coughs> uh, to bypass Lomita and go down Elk. Mm -hmm. That then asks, begs another question, which is, where is there a, um, and let me get the, the proper terminology for it, like the primary emergency response route to, there's a high school there, an elementary school, Elk abuts the elementary school. Um, if we reach a point where 
we start to see overflow peoples try to zip down Elk now to bypass Lomita. Um, and then we have in the future residents of Elk coming and saying, this is, this is too much, we need you know, humps. Will they be precluded because it's a, a, a primary response? So by basically voting on putting humps, are we, are we checkmating the people of Elk? that they will never be able to get some sort of slowdown on the street. So that's a bunch of questions, but. I'll try my yeah, best to answer please, them. Yeah, please, thank um, you. Uh, I took a look at the uh, fire response routes before I came here, and, and, I'll, and I'll try. I know the one that stood out is the nearest one is on Louise. But I can't picture, I believe it's Louise from Colorado to the north. That's a primary response route. Elk, I did not see as a primary response route. So. I don't think they would transfer from using um, um, Lomita to Elk from a fire response For perspective. Okay. And, and uh, regarding the, the, diver the diversion of, of traffic, um, if the traffic calming measure would have initiated uh, from the concern of, of high volumes, in other words, cut through traffic through Lomita, then, then I think it would be something that we would likely evaluate even during the, the, the study. Uh, but in this case, the, the concerns were higher speeds rather than volume. And if we look at the traffic volume, if I'm not mistaken, we had 1,526 cars. So usually that doesn't show that there's a, a cut through problem, okay. th those sorts of volumes. <coughs> so, so even if we did have that, that um, um, percentage of, of drivers that rather not drive on Lomita because of the speed humps, it, it shouldn't be that high of a volume. Okay. Yeah. So my, my next question then would be, do you have any indication of the drivers who are going down Lomita, are they related to the school? Are they, are they vehicles that are dropping off, picking up, any affiliation with the school? Are they just local residents <coughs> using the street? Do we have any indication of who they might be? In terms of the traffic volume, it would be both. Uh, we conduct the traffic volume and speed counts during the school year, so the volume counts will represent both um, drivers going to and from to the school as well as residents and anybody else using the street. Uh, as, far, as far as the speeders, I... I guess, I, I guess my, my, my question is, my concern is that it's, it's near the school. If this is something, I'd like to know if, if it's somehow related to... There's oftentimes a lot of speeding near schools. Sometimes it's the result of people dropping off kids, rushing, late, speeding. Did the school give an indication when they applied what, where their concern was? I mean, this wasn't something that was happening at 9 o'clock at night. Was mm -hmm. there a specific time frame that they were exhibiting most of their frustration and concern? It would have been during the school the Just school, the school hours, time. Yes. Has the school done anything? I mean, I know and it's not, it's not a requirement in the traffic calming, but it just from my understanding, so get a better sense of how we're applying all of this, have they done anything as outreach in terms of helping with the traffic calming? There's various schools throughout the district that actually do things visibly to alert drivers and to get them perhaps to slow down, whether it's you know, marked off areas for drop off, slow down, signs, um, specific things that they can do. Have they done anything of that sort? Um, the, 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 um, the grade school does, Holy Family Grade School does have uh, pick up and drop off. My understanding it occurs both on Lomita as well as Elk. So they distribute it. Uh, whether they've done um, attempted measures to, to slow traffic, I. I I don't think schools have a lot on their toolbox, if you want to say, to actually slow traffic. They could try to uh, improve the, the operation of the pickup and drop off areas, which if I'm not mistaken, the, the schools have done that. There's designated areas where they pick up and they drop off. Um, as far as the speeders, um, it was mainly during the school hours that they had their concern. So it could be the, the, the parents themselves um, driving a little faster than is comfortable yeah. for the school. And, yeah. and, I, and I think what I'm trying to get at is, um, and I'm not expecting, would anyone expect schools to 
sort of take the helm of helping to reduce the speeding on streets around them. However, I do think that there's a responsibility with education and outreach with schools towards parents who are picking up their kids and who are interacting with the school. Um, there's many schools that do it in the, in the, in the district, so that was my, my question to see what kind of education and outreach they have done for their own you know, internal community to see if they can address the issue, right? So that's what I was hoping to see, maybe that they've done, they've tried, they've sent flyers, they've put it in newsletters, they've done what they could. Um, I can do some more research in, in, in coordination with the, with the Holy Family grade school and find out what they've done. I know with the uh, schools in the Glendale Unified School District that we coordinate with closely, um, the schools put on their websites usually a traffic circulation, inf an information packet uh, for, for, um, for parents, mm -hmm. oftentimes encouraging them to abide by the laws and, 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 and not speed. Okay. Um, but, um, but I will coordinate with, with the school and find out a little bit more and give you an update on that. Because what, what I'm going to get at later, you know, after we get through this, um, this item, is this idea of it things seems, th seems thing, things seem a little bit backwards in the sense that this commission is being asked to look at applying or, or to consider the motion for, you know, the speed humps for traffic calming. And then if you read, you know, the report, it says, and if we don't pass it, then their alternatives would be, um, you know, striping or putting up a mobile sign. To me, and I think this is something staff should look into in terms of tweaking our traffic calming guidelines, is why not before applying for, uh, you know, requests for speed humps, which is pretty permanent and costs a lot of money, you know, relatively speaking, um, to try those steps and have a checkup on how it's doing after those steps and has there been an impact um, as opposed to just jumping in and putting in humps where, you know, it's going to meet all the requ requirements. I'd love to see those initial steps being taken. Um, if they fail and it's not working, it gives, as far as, as I'm concerned as a commissioner, a peace of mind that, okay, now let's look what other tools we have in our toolbox. So I think... And from my perspective, I would love to see that um, to change. So, um, and also to give the message that when there's a speeding issue, it's not, shouldn't always be, uh, let's go to the city and get speed humps. Um, it's, a, it's a good tool, but again, we need to think about the process a bit and see how we can not necessarily do it when we absolutely you know, have to. So that's going to be my thought on that. But Chair, there could be a name. I think what you mentioned, that's something we can experience that. But those recommendations, usually they're not self-enforced. And time and time show that whatever we try to do, even the flashing, even anything kind of you know, slow down the traffic, it's been really pretty much end up being a waste of time and money. And that's why for the school, we kind of, when, when your commission uh, work really hard on bring up to those, those elements, those parameters to make it applicable to school, right. uh, uh, just to capture that 90, 90th percentile. That's true. And be able to really narrow it down, customize it, or tailor it to that condition. Right. Because regardless what they do, the school, and here private school, there's limited maybe fund also for them or to have a crossing guard, which we really mainly we do it on the public school, not the private. And it proven that if you don't put some physical um, uh, barrier, if you want to say, to really mandate the driver to slow <coughs> down before causing damage to his car or losing control or her car, um, we cannot afford to have an officer there during those hours. When you put signs, if it's not enforced by officers, mm -hmm. it's hard to become effective. Some may, you know, abide by those signs, but reality, practically, it's, it's shown it's not effective, unfortunately. Yeah. But something we'll look at in the future, probably we do that little pilot for two or three months, see how that works, 
and bring it before you before even consider and, that. And but we cannot refuse those requests no, no, by the public, as you know, if they meet those requirements, we cannot say we're not putting it. And, and, I, and your point is well taken about the school and our specific transformation of these guidelines yeah. to actually protect uh, the school zones in a, in a better fashion, and I, I understand. My comments were uh, more directed um, broadly, although I did bring up the issue of the school. It is a broader concern I have, um, as, you, as we've discussed. It, it can then bring on a domino effect. So what starts in a school zone uh, may end yeah. up taking things beyond the, the school place. zone. Right. Uh, right. So several streets uh, down the road. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that's, that was just my point um, on that. Mm -hmm. But um, I will pass on to my fellow commissioners. Any other comments? I don't have any comments. Um, I just want to piggyback to what uh, Chairperson Yakubian said. Uh, I agree with what she said, by the way. Uh, why, it is only 751 foot long stretch. Why can't we have one speed hump rather than two? And every 375 feet, you can have one versus every 238 feet. Um, the only reason I'm suggesting that is because it's a school zone, there are children there, and children. Uh, school is not, it's not a public school, it's, it's a private high school, there are not a lot of kids, and we're talking only 1,526 cars, it's not a lot of cars. Can we have only one speed hump? Uh, that is an option, I think there's, there's minimums and, and maximums, so as I thought this through, it ranges from about 200 to 400 feet, so if we just put one, we would be much longer than the 400 feet, so we which, wouldn't which is okay. meet that. That, that criteria. I mean, for 1,526 cars, I think that should be okay. The problem, if it doesn't work, um, then we have to remove that because if we're going to put this one, it's going to be somewhere halfway. And in order to bring the second one, we're going to remove the middle one and put it back the way it's shown on this exhibit. Um, risk we may take, but if it doesn't work, we'll be then spending twice what we anticipate to do. <coughs> I wish we do have some of those temporary, you can pin them down, uh, but those are also costly. They are rubber yeah. uh, humps, uh, but those are not allowed anymore due to the maintenance and, uh, and the liability of those, because they tend to wear out, and you have those pins sticking out and become another issue we have to deal with. Um, it's a risk we take to be more effective up to 350 or 400 max between two. So this is almost close to put one halfway, but that's enough speed, four or 500 feet, enough for the driver who's been speeding to speed, continue speeding again. It doesn't help us much. Two, definitely, they have to slow down on that. So I mean, my, it's my issue cost is effectiveness and taking a risk where the traffic engineer require, recommending two, we end up putting half to cut the cost, may not be effective. That's where the staff had a little bit concerned about that. Um, we don't want to flood South Glendale with speed humps. That's, that's, uh, that's a short of it. And then, I mean, it's school zone. Do they deserve it? I think so. But as Chairperson Kubian said, what if next block comes or Lamita and Chestnut and, uh, and, and Elk, if everybody else comes? So then, far, we have two for the schools, but I think one coming up, I think non-school zone, right? Because I, I remember we, should, we put one. Future. There's a yeah. third for, a, for another school zone. We'll be see that. That's the first one that kind of meet the requirement and non-school zone. Uh, <coughs> last year, I, I recall, we put one between Glendale Avenue and Chevy Chase. It was on Elk, from our recall. It was a long block, and they were speeding. I drove that street, that area. It was a long stretch, and we put in speed bumps. That was worthy. But I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, this is a very short block, 751 feet. Can I just show, uh, have we had any requests for speed humps that have been, that have not met requirements so far this year? Or we, in recent? We have plenty, and that's why when we brought it before you, that was part of some of them, um, really they wanted to have, and we told them to hold off till we pass the new guidelines. Uh, with the new guidelines, a lot of them that doesn't apply anymore. They cannot. They will not be qualified. They will not be qualified. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting to yeah, know. Because we're changing the speed. That's the key. The counts. 
and uh, some of them, they've been in, in uh, emergency um, wow. corridors that we told them already know, and they thought they can still push for that. So there's a lot of streets are not qualified okay. anymore. You know? I think that's a good thing for us to hear. Yeah, that's actually. true. <laughs> that's true. But this is the first one we see sin since we passed this back in May 22nd last year. The guidelines. Um, that's the first request we, we received recently on a residential street, but meeting all those requirements for non school. For non school. Non -school. Oh, okay. That's the yeah, first one we'll see that. Okay. Yes, and I'd like to add, um, Chairman Pro Tem Yakubian, in answer to your, your questions that you had brought up. Um, the neighborhood, neighborhood traffic calming program, the way it's configured, it's set up to what I call empower the community, right, to get involved and, and choose the type of um, traffic calming measure that, that best suits them. Mm -hmm. So um, what we're noticing is that, is that for the most part, people, when they come in and they request, they know what they want. You know, they, they're really looking for the speed humps, um, which is why we move forward in, in, in that respect. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and I know uh, a point you brought up, why not start with uh, other measures that are uh, a little less uh, permanent, uh, such as the speed radar, the, the edge line striping. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's happening is the community is coming to us from the beginning and, and making a, a choice of what traffic calming measure they want to move forward, forward with. Mm -hmm. So um, as we move forward and we evaluate the locations and we move to the community outreach component where we send out the petition, that's where the community as a whole has a chance to look at it and say, well, do I want speed hump or, or do I not want it? So there's always that component if we get to there and most of the community doesn't want something as permanent on their street, then, then they could say no and then we can backtrack and, and offer them something else that isn't as permanent such as the speed radar or the, or the, um, or the striping. Okay. Excuse me, one thing came to mind. Um, Again, sorry for my voice. Um, I forgot what street we were working on a couple of years ago where the car dealers or the mechanics were test driving cars. Garfield. Do have, yes. Do we have any dealer traffic or mechanic traffic on the street that you know of? No. Of? No. That is, uh, we we didn't, did not notice that from our field investigations and the, and the location just uh, didn't indicate that and also the, the, the volumes of traffic we're dealing with. Thank you. Okay. If we have no other comments, do we, um, do we have a motion then? I would move the uh, recommendation by staff that's outlined in our agenda item. I'll second. Thank you. I'll take roll call. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Gonzalez. Yes. Chair Pro Tem Yakubian. Yes. Commissioner Kirkchin. Yes. Commissioner Sahakian. Commissioner Nazarian. Yes. Before the screen comes off, may I ask a couple questions? Not relative to the action, because sure. I was waiting for the parking uh, bumps to be discussed and approved. Can, may I ask a sure. question about Go ahead. the visual? Yep. Um, I was looking at the packet in front of us, and then I noticed on this screen, can someone please explain, I think I could speculate what it might be, the cross uh, walk that is along, um, is that Glendale Avenue? Glendale. Yeah. And then the diagonal, I think I understand that, and then it's another, and then it's yellow or orange again. Is this also because of the school area, and why do we have them there and not even further to the west and even north? West. I'm just curious what's happening there, especially in the whole notion of walking and pedestrian, and why are those accentuated? Uh, I think I can give it a shot. Okay. It's yeah, the ADA certainly. ramps, the corner, they're connecting the corner ADA ramps. It's for, um, it's, it's, uh, for circulation for ADA. Correct. Otherwise, you have to add additional ramps, which probably because of the existing driveways wasn't feasible. So both corners of the Lomita, the northeast and southwest, are where you have the ramps, and that crossing is connecting those ramps. So I, I don't, and I, where are the ramps? I don't see the ramps. Well, when this scale is going to be hard to see, but they're right, right there, that one. That's so the that, yellow. 
So that ramps down? Or that ramps down area? to the street. Yep. So it's the means and access for ADA requirement. So that is telling me that the other intersections don't have that issue, apparently. Have ramps there. Uh, they they likely, likely have ramps. Uh, what it is we, on but Glendale we and. This pattern here, we don't see it. I think that's your question. Because there's right. no ramp. Why the, we have this is zebra crossing here. Wasn't that the safe you route to. Yeah, that's it was, relatively new, isn't it? It was likely a newer improvement yeah. new, new and it was put in a safe route to school. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's the safe route to school. Just yellow line. Oh, the visual is, is doesn't yes. have it, yes. but it's there. It is. There. Okay. Yes. I, thank you very but much. Not, well, not exactly that. like that, but no, it's but there. But it relates to that. Correct. Yeah. And okay. you do have it here. Yeah. This is the new part of the Safe route to School. Stuff. Safe route to School. That's the program. Yeah. yeah. That's so relatively. That would be at the top then too, also by the school <coughs> north, northwest, right corner there. As well, you have you see on the northeast, but it's not yellow anymore. It's right. But also to the west. Correct. On the west also. and northwest. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, fellow commissioner. <laughs> Can we have a uh, next item, please? Item 4A is approval of minutes for the March 4, 2019 special meeting. Do we have a, any comments on that meeting? And if not, is there a motion? Yeah, I move approval of the March 4 uh, special meeting minutes. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay, moving on to 4B. I'll just take roll call. Oh, roll call. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lisa. All right. Uh, Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Yakubian? Yes. Commissioner Kirkjian? Yes. Commissioner Sahakian? And Commissioner Nazarian? Yes. Next item, please. Okay. Item 4B is approval of minutes for the March 25th, 2019 regular meeting. Okay, any, any um, comments on that, or if not, a motion? Let's move. We'll approve. Someone. We need, I guess. Uh, I, I have to abstain. You I have guess. to abstain? Yeah. Right. So I'll second. Did we have someone to make the motion? Yes. Who, oh, yes. oh, you were. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Talking to you. With all the voice he had. <laughs> Sorry, you mustered it. <laughs> all right, very good. Roll call, please. Okay. Commissioner Gonzalez? Abstain. Chair Pro Tem Yakubian? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Kirkchian? Yes. Commissioner Sahakian? Commissioner Nazarian? Yes. Uh, next item, please. Item five is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. The commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. I don't have any speaker cards. No. Okay, let's move on to the next item. Item six is commission staff comments and updates. Uh, Mr. Chairwoman uh, Jacobian and commissioners, before Mr. Casanova give us an update on the recent meeting that he had with Caltran on Mountain and the SR2, I would like to introduce our new Public Works Director for the City of Glendale, <coughs> Mr. Um, Imrani. Mr. Imrani, he was the Public Works Director for the City of San Fernando, and uh, this is his first day joining the city and that's his first meeting with the TPC oh. tonight so, we so this welcome. Is two birds in one stone per se so <laughs> just welcome Mr. Emirani and uh, he's, he'll be here uh, if you have any questions for him or it's just introduction for him tonight so, so this so. is an extension of the item that I missed uh, number eight on the last agenda a continuation is that what I'm hearing I misunderstood that uh, which I'm, I'm sorry which? this one um, on mountain, the discussion. The we... update of last time. Yes, correct. Right. Correct. That's what this You're is right. about. Correct. This okay. is what uh, Mr. Casanova is going to give us update on oh, that. Okay. Uh, if okay. you recall, at the last meeting, uh, the staff, you know, right. they tried to make an effort to meet on site with Caltrain and discuss the traffic signal issue. The guardrail has already been put to rest due to the liability issues in terms of extending the guardrail. But this is about uh, the left turn going west on mountain and take the southbound uh, while the cars going eastbound, uh, east on mountain making a right turn or taking the uh, onbound on-ramp 
um, how we can minimize those conflicts, not dodging each other. So I think, you know, Mr. Casanova will give you some update on that. Would we give a minute to our new director you, I, also? I was <laughs> welcome to our to our illustrious meetings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. welcome to have you aboard. Would you like to say a few things about your experience so far in Glendale and uh, what you're looking forward to doing? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair Pro Tem, uh, Chair, members of Commission. I'm very happy to have joined the Glendale team. Um, looking forward to working with the great staff that we have and with the Commission and with the Council. Uh, this is a um, one of the uh, issues that uh, uh, that I know is a one of the concerns for the residents is of parking and traffic and all of that and I'm looking forward to working uh, on those issues and uh, come up hopefully with some uh, uh, workable solutions for the residents uh, of this uh, great city but I'm very happy that uh, I finally started uh, took a took a long time I gave my old city almost a month uh, notice which worked out but I'm very happy to be here thank you welcome welcome, welcome. Thank, yep. you. thank you okay so the update uh, regarding mountain Mountain Street, uh, we met with Caltrans uh, out in the field and where, where we left off on, on the last meeting um, was that the double right turn onto the southbound on-ramp, so coming up the hill on Mountain and, and double right, um, there's a no right turn on red sign there from 7 to 9 a.m. And uh, the, the question or, or request had come up, can we re remove that sign? And, uh, and as we move forward with, and we requested Caltrans to evaluate, we found in our files that uh, that initial request had come from the uh, Camino San Rafael community on the opposite side, on the east side of the freeway, as in the past they had difficulties making the westbound left turn to the southbound on-ramp. Um, so uh, we, we talked to Caltrans about that, and and we, uh, we came up with an alternative solution that we're going to separately move forward with, and that's to install uh, what we call blank out uh, no right turn LED signs. Oh, that's yeah, cool. and, and, and what those will do is that rather than to have a static sign up that's up 7 to 9 a.m. no matter <laughs> what, whether there's a conflicting left turn move or not, um, a blank out sign will only turn on during that com conflicting phase. So when you have the westbound left turners get the green arrow, then the, the, the blank out sign comes on for the, uh, for the eastbound double right turn move to not turn right. So we feel that that will be more applicable. Uh, people will only see the no right when, it's, uh, when, when there's a conflicting vehicle making the turning move, and, and we think it would work better. Uh, as we met out in the field with Caltrans to also take a look at the signal timing issues that were brought up uh, for the northbound off-ramp, uh, we also discussed the blank out LED, uh, the LED sign with them. And at least from a field technical level, um, uh, they concurred that it, 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 it would be a good improvement. So we still have to move through the, the Caltrans encroachment permit process, uh, prepare the design plans and move forward. But, but we think for the long term that would be a, a, a viable solution. Um, now regarding the signal timing uh, for the northbound uh, off-ramp, the problem there was that as you get off the off-ramp, you make a left turn and some of the traffic will get caught on the red and quite a bit of the traffic. So uh, we met out in the field and we ran through the various plans of the, of the day. We're able to change it on the spot. Um, and we adjusted, or Caltrans adjusted the signal timing so that you'll be able to make that northbound left turn move off the off-ramp and most of the queue of vehicles will be able to clear as they uh, drive uh, westerly on mountain uh, down the hill towards the college. Can, can I ask, how, the static LED uh, light, mm -hmm. um, it's replacing the sign, but let me, can you make it clear to me, I'm going to try to understand this, it's, it's going to be effective during that period that you said is in conflict. Um, but that's going to be a set time that's going to be pre-assigned, am I correct? So if you're saying that the time of conflict is between 7 and 9 a.m., 
that sign's going to come up. It has serves the same purpose as a regular sign. So where is the benefit? That it'll be able. It we could keep it on 24/7, and I and I think that's the the direction that Caltrans will go, meaning that it'll be activated. So if there's a westbound left turn uh, vehicle waiting to make a left turn, so it's so it's narrow. tripped by mm -hmm. by the. Uh, I guess it's the westbound traffic. Correct. By oh, the it's westbound left okay, turn. Okay, that's my point. Right. Yes, so it's yes. triggered by the westbound. Okay. Yeah. That's so fine. anytime there's a vehicle there making the left turn, then the blank out LED sign will turn on for the eastbound right turner saying no right turn. So it, it addresses and that conflict. May I ask a, a, my engineering uh, commissioner? So is there a sensor of some sort that's on? It, it's on the street. Yes. It's yeah. like on the on the ground. Okay. Yeah, it would be the same one that activates that westbound left turn. Okay, that's fabulous. Yeah. I yes. like that. That's yeah. Thank and, you and, so much. And and uh, it is a fully protected left turn. Yes, it's protected. Correct. Please clarify that fully protected. I missed that. Yeah, that it, it's a red, yellow, green arrow, uh, red, yellow, green arrow, where some of our locations will have five indications uh, on the arm, and sometimes you'll be able to make the left turn during a green ball, and sometimes on the left turn. I, at this location, it's strictly uh, green, yellow, red, left turn arrow. For the person coming to go on the on-ramp heading south? Correct, west to southbound, yes. And then the person that's in the car that's going to make a right-hand turn to go south has the right-of-way until the light goes on. I mean, until you're advised that you can't make a turn. Correct. Yeah, yes. And what they have normally is during that, that, that same phase is they have a, a red ball, a, a red indication, which uh, legally you can make a right turn on red if there's no conflicting traffic. But what will typically happen, you have two right turn lanes and, and people start flowing. And all of a sudden, the red ball comes on, and it takes them a little while to make that, that full stop. And in this case, the blank out LED will turn on right away, telling them that there's a car coming in the other direction. So the diamond lane, um, not the diamond lane, but the, the, um, uh, the lane that is to the north of the two lanes, that will be restricted also. It will not be able to make a right-hand turn onto the on-ramp as long as it says someone else is coming. You, you can't make a turn. It's Correct. for both lanes. Correct. The, the, the blank out LED sign will, will be visible to both right turn lanes. Yes. So this is a major, major yeah, outcome. Uh, if we put a calendar on this, uh, first of all, I'd like to ask the calendar question, if I may, please. You mentioned the neighborhood to the east. Mm -hmm. When did they make the request of the issue happening? When you said you looked it up and you saw it, yes. wh what decade was that? It was in the 2000s. Uh, let me see if I can uh, find that little cell in my, in, my, in my brain to find it. But uh, it was circa 2006, okay. seven, yes. So the previous decade. Now, when the request was made from this <coughs> dais, which has been about four years, maybe four, three, four. Four, four. So I take it this is gonna be installed this weekend coming up? I'm just kidding, by the way. <laughs> yes, but in calendar, in, in, in Caltrans weekends. I know. So, <laughs> That's right. okay. so what is your Caltrans speculation stuff. of when it might be installed? Because there are going to be a lot of drivers that would take mm -hmm. those lanes. They're going to get some relief. Well, I'll give you a realistic time frame. Six months. Six give months? Give us six months. That'll give us time to work I on I was going to say on a, a year <laughs> minimum. <laughs> Let but me that, I like that. Let yeah, me correct I, I, this yeah, right. so, To be on safe side, Commissioner yeah, maybe, Nazarian maybe understands. one year. <laughs> the reason why we discussed that with Caltrans, they don't have the funds, they don't have the money. It's not expensive to do it. But they are willing to review the design, uh, give us encroachment permit, and we'll do it ourselves. That's going to take some time. But at least both agencies on the same page. It's the funding, the timing, and, and the cost, again, it's minimal is the time and the process that's going to take us some time. Caltrans isn't, they're not paying for it? No. Oh, they're not? No. no. But we take donation from you if you want. <laughs> we may have to have a bake they sale. They won't. The reason they, they <laughs> <laughs> at least split the cost. Next, they next meeting, it, right? put that we, on we the should. agenda, <laughs> right? We can bake agendize sale. that item. <laughs> um, you know, we share costs and that, but not this particular, this is more in the mind. <coughs> um, for for city use more than a flow on the freeway mm -hmm. right no i mean it's, so it's, so that's yeah. why and 
honestly, because it's it's so minimal. As I mentioned, if if re replacing the the poles, uh, get new cabinet. This is you start talk, talking in the millions of dollars. We can go through Measure R. We can do f some funding. Measure M could play a role in this. This is very minimal, and, um, so, and uh, use it in other cities. You're probably familiar with it on Foothill and Jerusalem Highway in La Cañada. Right. It's so, very, very effective. So does, does the city it's minimal hire a cost. Subcontractor to do this, or does the city do it with their own? Staff? We have contractor on board who maintain our signal. They will give him permit, double permit, to go Econolite. They can install it for us. We can package part of other signal project coming up. But because of this, really. It's not significant in terms of other capital projects we do. Uh, we can do it through our contract. Do we have other locations? I'm trying to think. In the city of Glendale that has this? Uh, uh, yes, uh, along San Fernando Road at the railroad crossings. So when the gates come down, I see. a blank out LED sign will go on for the right turners that could turn towards the trackway. Yeah, telling them not well, to this turn is right. a, This is a. It is interesting. An, it's, it's, I, I like analogies, so I like to say it's a changing of a valve that will bring the flow of blood into into Glendale, right there a good at, metaphor. at Beautiful. Glendale College, <laughs> and yes. you know, right into the heart of that busy intersection down at Mountain uh, and Verdugo. So uh, I, I think the update is well needed, and um, a lot of people have, a lot of citizens have. Um, so my hat's off, uh, and anyone who's watching in the TV world. Uh, dealing with Caltrans, they're uh, you know great people. It's just very difficult to to push things through uh, when you have ideas and you're trying to make it work. And as you stated, they are on their own um, calendar and time. So uh, wow, this is a great achievement for the staff uh, for Glendale uh, City staff. I commend you, commend you for this. I, I further uh, echo our chair's uh, comments on this. This is an incredible, uh, for the, everyone driving there, I mean, I don't talk to everyone, but a lot of people in the neighborhood where, where I live have commented on that because if there was a frustration that people were thinking was going to cause an accident. Because a lot of people turn in them anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, car or no car, they make a turn. And, um, okay, and I, I was going to ask a question about this because I saw it seemed like an open item, but I also commend you for getting this done, uh, uh, Mr. Casanova, in, since the last meeting. I mean, you, you apparently you had to schedule a meeting at the site. You got it done since mm -hmm. March 22nd, and there's some good momentum. So Yeah, I, there is. I, really I have them on my cell phone now, so <laughs> <laughs> I, can hold, I can find them. Good. It's very good. Can I add one more Please. item? <clears throat> since we're on this intersection, it's my favorite intersection in the city since I pass it every day, twice or three times sometimes. On the off-ramp, the two lane that are making left turn to the westbound, it's really confusing because we have three lanes, westbound and the inside lane, you don't know if you're gonna go in the middle or you're gonna go on the very left one. So while you're working on this, if I may ask to add this wish list and maybe add some striping that shows the radius or something, because I don't know how you guys turn, but I'm still confused, and I'm confused, you know, as an engineer, if I have to go to the middle one or the very left one. Okay. from the inside off-ramp. At that same intersection? On same intersection, off-ramp. When you go northbound, you get off the freeway. Yeah. The inside lane, you have two choices. You can go middle, middle or you can go the very outside. Right. And it's very confusing for the other guy if he's trying to get to the middle lane. But there's only two lanes there. No. Three. There's there are three. three lanes, yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. I'm going right to second that concern. Straight, whether, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, whether the it's, straight can make a left yeah. or go through. You know, we had that issue, We had, and I, it was brought up at one of our meetings, it was the 134 uh, exit, uh, 134 heading east on Glendale Avenue. And uh, those, those cars, so there's the, you know, there's two lanes that can go right, or the center one can go left as well, and it's the, the lane delineation for those people that are trying to turn left um, was very, very difficult. I remember because there was some road work that was being done um, and I think Rubik at the time told me that they would look into it as they were doing the uh, capital improvements uh, there. But I don't know whatever became. But you know, that's a I think an easy fix, uh, relatively speaking, is is to check those lane markers. I, I do agree with Commissioner uh, Nazarian on that. Certainly, um, um, I'll reach out to Caltrans. Uh, that falls within their purview of, of maintenance, <coughs> so um, I can put in a request for that. 
They manage the lane markers uh, on our street? It's theirs. It's their right it's away. Theirs that, right that's right not our street, that's Caltrans. The Glendale intersection off the off ramp. So yes, the off ramp going on. I see. So, so just so I understand, so we can I'm increase sorry the donation for, oh. part of it. For I was hoping that we can add to the same Here package. Yes, that's what I was hoping. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Two big. Sizes. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so just so I understand, and I'm sorry for yes. asking this question, but uh, this is at Mountain at the two freeway. Correct. As you get off, go and you want to make you get off, and you can either go east. Or west. Correct. You said there's and, and if you, you want to go west and you're inside lane, you have two yeah. options. You can get in two different lanes, and that's going to confuse the outside lane if he wants to get in a middle lane. Hmm. I'm have to drive. I drive that often. I thought there were only two lanes there. Yeah. No, three. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank we'll, you. Thank we'll, you so we'll much. Thank you. No other comments, updates. Um, or would you uh, uh, staff I mean just please go ahead yeah. Commissioner so par thank you part part of this is partially answered already with the really good news we just heard because I was very curious um, it seemed to me as I read the minutes of the meeting I'm sorry that I had to miss because I had a personal commitment that I could not get out of but um, I was wondering that it looked like a, an open item but now that's concluded so I really appreciate that my other inquiry has to do with um, the protocol, please, just so I have an understanding. Um, the meeting before that, April the 20th, excuse me, I'm sorry, March the uh, 4th, there was a gentleman here from Metro and also a representative from the city relative to our proposed, um, um, let's see, what, what, are they, what is the city calling it, the, the streetcar? Yes. The rolling stock streetcar. Yes. Um, and I just want to get an understanding of, of the kind of information and non-action needed at that meeting on uh, March the 4th <coughs> of such an important item uh, for the transportation of the city at that day. And not that uh, the uh, speed bumps are not serious items, those are very serious items also, but I noticed that the speed bumps items are always put on as an action item. I'm curious, does it go forward from here to the city council? And going back to the agenda item of Metro, it was an information item, no further action needed by the Transportation and Parking Commission. That was clear, but does that mean then that Metro then goes to the city council and gets a final approval? Okay. Or is it, it mainly, mainly just a public, not just, mainly it's a public meeting for input by the, by the public. Yes, Commissioner Gonzalez, um, any item that you see before you by the staff as action item, we give the opportunity for the resident or the applicant, in this case, let's say the speed dump you mentioned, to appeal to the city council within 15 days. Okay, they're gonna appeal it. If, if they are not in uh, uh, sync or in support of the commission decision, okay. in this case, if you don't hear within 15 days, that item doesn't have to go to the city council and the staff will move forward in implementing those items and based on the finding the funds and package with other projects in this particular one. So then when it would go to city council, if a person would be appealing or a group would be appealing, uh, that item would go on the agenda and then the city council would need to decide. Correct. Okay. Correct. For what you see is speed arms yes. or any other, you know. On that agenda that was approved Correct, by the on the 4th and 25th. But for the uh, um, Metro presentation, mm -hmm. this is more educational for us and inform you, but if you have any concern, the staff will take it before the council because Metro is planning to give that presentation to the council. And, and there's a bigger role, it's gonna be really for the council, whether they agree or disagree on that, which our commission doesn't have that authority, your advisory, more than directing the staff to reject or say we don't want it. But any concern you have, will, those information will be compiled and, and be part of the staff report when they go before the city council. So the because of the, the funding, uh, the, the, the magnitude of the project, it's beyond our, 
our role at that point. With all due respect, not, not you no, know, no, no, but any technical concern as a resident, we take those comments and, and we're going to see that coming before you on a street court. As you know, we have LRT, we have BRT, we have NOHO, we have Metrolink, and, and all those, some of them sharing the same corridor. And, and that's why we ask Metro, as you know, they will be coming before you, by the way. One of the requests the commissioner asked, you know, we have so many transit going yeah, on here. Yeah. Can we get all on the same page or at least put them all together into one presentation? Exactly. And we're working on that. They, they, with the timeline, since we have that meeting, that request, Metro cannot do it in that one month. We're looking in June, most likely, will come before you and presenting again the LRT, the BRT, the NOHO, the Metrolink, the station that we had that time, last time discussion, as well as any impact on the scooter and the e-bike that you may see it in our city in the near future for as a pilot study for mainly like a year or so, the study. That will so when those come in June or whenever, it's an information item that staff presents and also Metro or whomever else. Yes. Then it goes to the city council, but without a recommendation one way or the other. No action, is that correct? Right. We'll, we'll bring up your concerns, the commission concerns, as part of the staff report presentation. We say we took it before the commission, and here are the, the commission concerns or comments that were made during that meeting for your consideration, mm. for, I mean, for the council consideration. Can I jump in? Please. Because it just popped into my... Uh, Mr. Hitty, I'm wondering, has there been any discussion uh, with the staff about, uh, you know, we have our taxi cab rules and yes. our guidelines, right, for um, licensing. Yes. But the cities around us, I don't know if my commissioners are aware, have made some pretty... The new AB? Yeah, new uh, drastic, yes. Yes. New changes with yes. the whole taxi cab. Yes. Um, Licensing. What what is our plan? How does uh, City of Glendale now? Um, are we going to be approaching our okay. view on this? We've been approached by the owner of the taxi cab um, companies that they serve the city. As you know, we have certain requirements, uh, mainly the inspection for the vehicles, as well as you know, the part of that process to get permit, including insurance and all the other stuff. Now with the new AB, I can get to that number, by the way, which uh, AB, um, it's what, it, what it says, the state law now, it says they can get permit for only from one city and they say can serve in another city. Meanwhile, the cab industry that serves in our city, they, they, they are asking, look, we have permits going to be expired or maybe already expired. Uh, can you put that on hold, continue kind of with the expired permit till we see how we're going to resolve that? We're setting up a meeting with them hopefully next week. Yes. But we, staff told them we cannot hold off on the process that the city has in place. We can send, and I, actually today that conversation even I had via, correspond via email. As a staff, I can tell you go ahead keep continue doing business with the city on expired permit and uninspected vehicles, right. regardless of what the state law said, till we meet with them because they have their legal counsel representative. Right, right, right. So, so you're so dealing with them we, I'm them dealing first. really started last week, that we're gonna meet this week, we cannot, we're gonna meet next week and to kinda open and that how does conversation. City council, what is city council's role in this? in this process. And transportation commission. I think at that point, but there's one of that law that passed, I think need to be taken to the council to be adopted. Right. In order to change our. Exactly. And correct right. me. Is that, uh, is that law? Uh, uh, county, state, what? No, 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 state law. And if you give me a few minutes, I can pill you that. I can put that section. I believe, I believe it's AB 1069 and it 1069. went into effect um, January of this year. And it's somewhat softens the currently highly regulated yeah. taxi cab industry. However, um, municipalities certainly have the right to enforce, um, you know, to make sure that, you know, the residents of the city have a safe ride, that they have, that there's ADA, they are ADA compliant and other public concerns. But um, in terms of, for instance, 
they are allowed to, I don't know if you've <coughs> ever experienced riding an Uber or a Lyft and all of a sudden your rate changes. Um, and that's because there's a high demand at the time. So there's surge pricing is what it's called. And so mm -hmm. this regulation would allow taxi cabs mm -hmm. to have surge pricing as well. Um, and some other. AB 1069. Yes. So, so an item like that is going to, would it be coming to this commission like other taxi Uber things have done and then there's a recommendation and action? Because you regulate that, you're right. You're, I, I'll, I need to check whether do we have to bring it here because it's really, we're not changing the industry on them to see what the commission can do. This is city council okay. must yeah. adopt that, you know, uh, nothing we can do about it. All we told them, don't change what you're doing. If it's going to cost you twice, so be it, because we can't tell you, we, we can't put insurance on hold, we can't put liability on hold till we see what we want to do. Exactly. You continue as usual, the option for you, you don't want to renew it, but don't run the cab in the city if you don't want to or renew it till we resolve that. So most likely, with the advice of the council, maybe most likely we'll go straight to the city council, my guessing. You're on top of it, though. I am for now. Okay, no. very good. That's what we want to know. Okay, very good. Was there any other comments? Okay. Um, I was contacted by St. Mary's Armenian Church, 500 South Glendale Avenue, yesterday being Easter Sunday. Uh, it was a parking chaos there, and there are a lot of street vendors around, uh, uh, vendors parked around the church, taking very valuable parking space. They're trying to get a permanent solution to street vendor problem that's happening around the church, and also uh, some kind of mechanism where Sunday morning, more Sunday mornings, parking is available surrounding church parameters versus people parking their cars for various reasons. Are those food trucks or it's a vendor? What type of vendor? Are they like sidewalk vendor or food trucks? There are two different uh, types regulation. I don't want to say that in public yet, but different type of vendors. Well, um, if you don't mind, I'll have the staff contact you, get more information, and see how we can tackle that. Um, food trucks, it's different process than if somebody brought key out or built some, put something on the sidewalk and tried to sell. That's something we can control. The other stuff, it's more state and county regulation. Um, maybe a little bit difficult to prevent them for parking on the street and sell food in a truck regulated by the county health and permitted by the county health. There's li li limited um, it is, it is not authority the, that local agency can do. But it's not, can, uh, it is not food trucks. Food tr it's just vendors on this side. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We can offline get, gather more information and we can provide to the commissioners some update on that yeah. in terms of how we regulate that. Okay. okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. If there's no other comments uh, or updates, um, the last item, please. Item seven is adjournment. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you.